Um, I, I must say that when I was asked to be here, that something dropped. Let me let me say the Holy Spirit just urged me, unctioned me to say something about what we're going to talk about. And the main reason is because we are lacking so much in church history in the Church of Jesus Christ. Um, most of the time, if we need to know how is it that the church is the way it is today, and why is it that we practice the things we practice today, and why? Oh, okay. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Sounds kind of high now. Okay. Okay. So I am um, really very happy that what, a couple years ago, a few years back, I was talking to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I don't, I'm not satisfied with where I am. And he urged me, I urged me to just seek him. And he said, to know me is to love me. Because the more you know me, the more you will love me. And to know me, read. Just that. I got up and I said, well, the churches that I've been going, they don't teach much about this. So we will hear a lot about what Paul says. Excuse me, just one thing. Um, FYI, Cassie's from the United States, so they, they turned the water off. So for half an hour, if you could just hold it for half an hour, he came down, flushed the toilet. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I just um, took it upon myself and I started to look in the scriptures and it was giving me everything I needed. So I, I did research and I did all kinds of uh, different sources of research. So today I'm going to, I, what you have in your hand are just snapses, just little bits and pieces of the church history, and one of the things that the Lord urged me to do was to go in that studies of this, the messages to the seven churches. Because when you study the history of the seven churches, you realize that it is not just for then, but it is for now as well. And God wants us to understand, and let me tell you, what I have learned makes me see God differently. I get to, I get in a closer relationship and I get to understand much, much, much more than just knowing that I'm baptized, I'm filled, I read the Bible every day, I pray and I'm living right and I clap and I sing and I shout and I go to church when church is keeping and I go home feeling good. It is much, much more than that. And so that's why I really want to present this to, to you today. I. Um, I did it once when I was in Florida, and I, but I did not go into as much physical history. I just did mostly what's written in the Bible and a few other uh, references. But today I give God thanks that we are here, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to thrash this out and to, I'm, I'm sure we're not going to be able to cover everything in details. Because one of the things that I found out, the more, when you scratch a surface, ah. you dig. Ah, and, then, and then you dig some more, yeah. and you the get you deeper. Dig, yes. And the more you dig, is the more you find. Yes. And this cannot end. You never get to the bottom of this. Yes. And believe me, I've spent hours and hours, and I've written, I never knew that I could write so much. But I turned to reading and writing and just explaining everything uh, to my, well, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes and I get references and different um, sources. So let us, uh, first of all, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to um, Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to ask you to turn there because that's where the, we're, we're going to focus on the messages to the seven churches and how it relates to history, how history explains. Because a lot of times we think that things just happen 
accidentally or you know, it's just, just one of those things. It is not one of those things. Prophecies get fulfilled. And what the Lord prophesied, what God told, what God told um, John on the Isles of Patmos was not just for them. There were the seven churches at that time. And there were letters written to them at that time. But those messages were not just for each church. Each church, I understand as I read, each church received the seven messages. But there was a specific message for a specific church. Yes. So therefore, if we say, um, this is Kingsway Church, right? Yes. And God wanted to send to Rehoboth and to Bethel and to, you name some others. He would send all seven messages to this church because at any one time, the message is appropriate for everyone. No matter whether you belong to Kingsway or you belong to Bethel. I just wanted you to understand that. So when, when you see the message to, say for instance, Ephesus, there were people in Ephesus who were going through what Smyrna was going through and what um, Laodicea was experiencing. You understand? So this message is not, it is, it is, it is not just for the church that is labeled alone. The message for Ephesus was not just for, mess, for, for Ephesus, that Ephesus need not read anything for Laodicea. Yeah. Okay? That's what I'm trying to get at. So, um, he gave the, uh, the messages to John. He said, John, write. Let us turn to Revelation chapter... And if you read chapter 1, I want to just read a couple verses there because I, I need you to go home understanding that this was not John. John was not, he did not eat a belly full of pork and then um, have nightmare. Mm -hmm. This was a vision from God. The Lord revealed himself a new revelation. The book of Revelation means that there was something that God needs to open up to John. Yeah. And it's a revel it's just what it is, revelation. So here Jesus in verse 7, chapter 1 verse 7, he himself spoke. And I tell you why he said what he said. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. Which means that, John, you, you heard about me in Genesis. When God told the serpent and he said, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. It was me. Then yeah. was talking to me. She was talking about me, Jesus, because everything that's written in red is Jesus. Jesus said. So he said, "I am Alpha and Omega." Remember, he told the Jews that before Abraham was, I was. am. Before Abraham was, I am. Which means that before Abraham was born, I made Abraham. The first John, said, um, John, Saint John, chapter one says, "In the beginning was the, the word. word, and the word was." With God, and the word was God. God. Now the, 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 the new world translation for the uh, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses they said a God, common God. The word was a God. So that is defiling Jesus right away, which I'm going to be picking it up with a person who sent me some tracks the other day, and I, I, I can't wait to really argue that point. Anyway, I'm just trying to let you know that the same Jesus in Genesis is the same Je uh, Jesus. Here in Revelation, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And then he, in, in verse 11, he says also, I am Alpha. Now, what Jesus in one conversation, or God in one conversation, will repeat himself and say the same thing again, it is very significant. Yes. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, once he is right, he's going to show him a vision and he should write it in a book and sent to the seven churches which are in Pergamos and Thyatira and Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea and of course Ephesus and Smyrna, okay, as we, as we will see. And in verse 17 he says, when I am, and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, 
Fear not. You know, let me tell you something about the appearance of Jesus. When, when, when you're having a church, when you have a church service and you feel good and the music is playing just right and you're dancing to the right beat and everything seems so, and you feel your spirit, your spirit getting real happy and nice and, 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 and everything happened and you go home and you say, boy, was church good. If you didn't say, Lord have mercy, I fear a little bit. The Lord was there. That's right. Because every time God appears, I'm not saying He was not there in that service, yeah. Yeah. but I'm saying that He didn't have much to do with all that joy and all that any commotion. I call it because what happened is that when God appears, yes, when He really appears, and I don't know if you realize that even sometimes when you're in your fasting period and, and, and you get down in the Lord and, yeah. and, and, and sometimes you don't know what happened, you feel like your body is transforming yes. Yes. and you just don't understand what the yes. atmosphere, the atmosphere changed in your room and something wonderful is happening to you and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Yes. He could say fear not because I'm yes. here, yeah. because yeah. he's here. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to give you this background so you know that whatever is coming, Jesus said it, yes. and do not take it lightly. Yes. He said, um, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. 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 That's, a, that's a very significant word, the amen. When Jesus Christ says amen, you can't add anything to it. Hallelujah. See Yes. See it, sign, and deliver. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And of the keys of hell and of death. And of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. This is a prophecy we need to understand that when, when God speaks, keep quiet. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. And he said, uh, the mystery of the seven stars. Let's see, you know, he, had, he would have to explain a little. Before, because this is such so, so a dreadful thing for John. Let me tell you, when the power of God falls on you, this weak old frame that we call a body. It's it. You cannot contain it. You can't, you, you can't help yourself. Sometimes you, you feel like you would jump and jump as yeah. high as you can, but can't do it. That's right. Praise God. Amen. He said, uh, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Some, some people think it's the messenger, yeah. you know, a physical messenger. But I tell you, no, I feel, uh, no, no, let me say, the Holy Spirit has given it to me to say that when if, if there's, a, there's a certain messenger for every church, in, in fact, each one of us has a certain messenger Hallelujah. that brings you encouragement, Glory. that brings you good news, Hallelujah. that gives you the courage to go on, Hallelujah. that gives you the might. When you see darkness, when darkness are before you, when the hills toward, uh, toward, toward the climb, that angel pushes you. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Amen. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven Church. churches. Amen. And he made, he made that explanation for a reason, as we shall see. Now, the messages are in chapters 2 and 3. Yes. We are not going to read the whole thing because we are pressed for time. I really was not given a time or anything. I don't want to overkill over you. But I, I'm telling you this, and I don't know why. We can do this in seven sessions of at least two hours a piece. And still not done. See what I'm saying? Okay. So for me to go through this in five in, in three hours or two hours, it's it's not I'm just scratching the surface. Okay. Alright, so to, to the Ephesians. Now we have some churches. Anybody can name it the seven churches? Anyone knows the name of the seven churches before looking at your paper? Ephesus, Ephesus. Sardis, Sardis. Sardis. Smyrna, Thyatira, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. 
Laodicea. Uh, the most important Pergamos. one, Pergamos, because Pergamos is where the church turned. And we won't get into it. That's where the gospel of Jesus Christ turned. I need, I need not tell you about Pentecost and what happened at Pentecost in the first 70 years of, 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 of uh, say, the first 40 years of Pentecost. After Jesus died, he got buried, and you know what happened there? And the church started, and after the church started, Satan got vexed. Now, I, 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 mentioned some, I, I mentioned something now to you that came to me very recently. Just, just the other day, I was watching, I was at work, I wasn't, even, I wasn't sitting down watching TV, but the, the patient had a, the, 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 the Passion of the Christ on TV on, and I just happened to see where he was better than Bruce so much. And I'm going to tell you something about that Holy Spirit said to me. Because when I saw the Passion of the Christ first, I said, I said, um, you know, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe that. I said, after, and I'll tell you why. I said, after Jesus Christ has been dead for so long and has been written, as he rose from the dead, and um, he said on the cross it was finished, and, 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 and all these things happened. I said, now, I'm not, I believe in the cross, I believe in the resurrection, and I appreciate that I give God thanks every day for dying for me. I said, but even that the producer of this movie was, uh, he was possessed with a demon to produce something like that, or he got converted. One of two things, he must get saved. If he didn't get saved, if he didn't get saved and sanctified and filled the Holy Ghost out of making this movie, yeah. then he was, demon, he was a demonic idea. Because on the, on the end, and I watched it, at the end, this is the first time, at the end, after all the beatings and the scourging and the tearing and the spitting and the crown of thorns and the tearing of his flesh and all those things that happened, you see how he ended the movie? He didn't even show how Jesus rose from the dead. He didn't show the earthquake. He didn't show the power of God that came and delivered. He did not give an idea of why Jesus Christ is the victor. He didn't show much victory over the grave. Yeah. All, the, 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 all the beatings and the uh, uh, mourning and the laughing. Did you see when Jesus died and how we laughed the devil? Mm -hmm. How we rejoiced when Jesus died? But the, 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 the director for this movie did not show the earthquake that shook the tomb. Yeah. And when Jesus did not show, walked out victorious and show himself. Yeah. And, 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 and when I saw that, I said, something is not right. Okay. And then not too long after that, his name is Mel Gibbs, right? The one who produced this movie. Yeah, right. did, if he got into some kind of disgrace after that, not, not too long, they just said, that man was not even thinking of the Christ because it was a plan, all it was money, it was money making. The passion of the Christ money making because it does not show the victory. All it shows was a small uh, thing and see, the only reason we know it's Jesus is because we see the hand with the nail in it. I say this to say that the devil does not like victory for the church. Amen. And anything that he can do to destroy our hope, he will. Amen. And so when Jesus is writing, when Jesus started to write these, these um, messages and send them to the church, the church of Ephesus got the first letter. They might have gotten all the letters at one time, but each church represents a church age, as we shall see. Yes. That Ephesus was that we call that the, uh, the message was given in the first century of the church, which is from AD 30 and to AD 100. Now I made approximate dates. Do not quarrel with me for these dates, because I've seen several dates, and but all the dates sort of covered that period. Okay. Um, to the church at Ephesus, we will read why the Lord thought they were fallen. Verse 1 of chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things that he that holdeth the seven stars
stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Hmm. Remember the seven golden candlesticks that we read about? Yeah. Please make a note and don't forget these are very key words because the candlesticks represent it. Each candlestick was the church, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I know thy works. This is Jesus talking to him. And he said to them, Right, and tell them that I know their works. I'm, not, I'm aware of their efforts. I'm aware of the things that go on in here in your life. I know how much you have strived to resist the enemy, to resist all the awful things that's happening in your life. I know how you want to overcome. He says, and the labor and your patience and how you cannot stand them who are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and they are not. And you found that they are liars. And you have borne and has patience. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Yes. Sounds very good. Yes. Sounds very good. It sounds it sounds like they were really a wonderful church, a hot church. I remember now, Ephesus was the headquarters church. Yes. It was the second, it was the uh, third after Jerusalem. Jerusalem then Antioch. Antioch became the second big center for the revival of, of Christianity. And then when Paul came in, he started to go out to all places. And of course, Ephesus was one of those places that he built. And so Ephesus was sort of the grandfather for all the churches in that region. Okay, so when he said that to Ephesus, you would think that they are all doing okay. But he said to them, Nevertheless, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. Because you have left your first love. You are not the fireball you used to be. You have neglected, you used to fast three times a week. And that was good to keep you hot. But now you think you saw only once a month is fine. Yeah. And you have made decisions, you have overturned some decisions that I have made. Because, you know, instead of being continually, uh, continuing in the love that I left you, he said you left your first love. Do you remember when you were first saved? Yes. Do you remember when you first received the Lord? Yes. I'm so happy. Do you know we have come to see the Holy Ghost? Yes. Do you, do you want to stay in church all night? And you can't wait for church to start again? Yes. And you really can't, I mean, the preacher can't come on quickly enough to hear the word. When testimony times come and, and, and the music and, the, and you're singing. Yes. You're burning up and you can't wait. I remember Sister Anne when she first got saved because I was already saved and she came to church. And I was sitting beside her one Sunday night in church and church was going on we were hot. And I testified and I touched your lad and she said, are you going to testify? I said, yeah, I'm going to testify. What we don't know what she said. I said, get up and say something. Hallelujah. And she got up and she just sit down yet. <laughs> She has not said yet. What I mean is, she's been a speaker of no mean order. Praise God. And I'm so glad that we've been friends and we encourage each other. Praise Jesus. But what I'm saying, he said, you lost your first love. We can't afford to lose out on Jesus. We cannot afford to not stay hot and afloat because we have an adversary that works overtime. Mm -hmm. And what he does, he, he doesn't work alone because he's not omnipotent and he's not omnipresent. He's not everywhere at all times. So he has his henchmen yeah. all over the place yes. doing his dirty deeds. Yes. And he will set them up to watch you. Yes. You think he's not watching you? He is. He's watching you and studying you and he wants to see your Achilles heel. He wants to know your weak points so that he can tell them. And, and, and when his henchmen go back, sometimes I said, Mr. When the, temp, when the devil what, uh, mess with me and mess with me and I have the victory, I said, I wonder what his henchmen go back and tell him. Because I must say, 
Well, we can't touch her in that area, you know, because she is one mean sister. You better, you better, you better um, back off of her in that area because she's not going to yield. Great God. Come in, sis. Come. No problem. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that, that the message that God wants, and if God takes the time out, listen to this, if he takes the time out to, to tell what to be one person to write, and John, by the way, was the only apostle who died a natural death. And I think it's because he was at the cross. He saw it, and he, he bore all that in his heart and his spirit already. It's not easy to see your friend get nailed, beaten, torn, slapped, insulted, and, 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 and stay the same. So he, he trusted John, and if you notice, John's writing are a little deeper than the others. I love John's writing. John tells you more about Jesus than any of the apostles. Amen. They say it was the apostle that Jesus loved, and he, he rested his, heart, his head against his breast. Yes. But I think it's more than that. We ought to rest our heads on his breast. Amen. He wants us close. Amen. He wants us to have a relationship with him. We are not strangers. We are not grandchildren. We are children. God doesn't have any grandbabies. Jesus. I like that. So, if your mother was out strong, start, start, you know, real powerful Christian. That doesn't mean that you can live off of hers. He said to them, he said, I have, a, I have a thing against you. And if you look at what I wrote here, the message, the key verse or key phrase is the word fallen. And this is the apostolic church which most of the members were first and second generation Christians. And that's the first and second generation Christians. They came either off Pentecost or they're the children of those who came off Pentecost. So they, were, they, were, they, got it, they got it right. They got it heavy. They got it perfect. It, it came from Jerusalem. And don't let anybody tell you that Christianity started in Rome. It didn't. And the head of the church is in Rome. It's not. Okay. And so they experienced the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, working of miracles, and holding the truth of the gospel, the truth of the gospel, not the dil diluted, not the watered down truth, but just as it came out of the mouth of the first apostles, and they knew it was so truthful, they, they, they believed it so much that most of them were happy to die for it. And when, you're, when, you, when you agree to die for something, it means that you really believe it. Amen. And I believe in the resurrection mainly because if Peter did not see Jesus, remember he denied him once, right? Yes. So if he didn't see him, if it was by, by uh, what Mary said or somebody else said and he yeah. accepted, he would probably deny him again when he wanted to crucify yes. him. Yes. But because he saw and experienced, yes. he experienced the touch, the mighty touch of Jesus, that when he, he handled him, and then when he was going to um, go up into the, the temple, and he saw the beggar there, and with all the, um, the, 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 the people of the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and all of them who criticized them, he did not care. He says, we need money, we don't have to give you, but yes. what we have, we will give you, and in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up, walk, get up. The first hand encounter. When you, and and, and we, we all get that. You see, when Jesus told Peter, says, um, you are the key of the kingdom. A lot of people misunderstand that. And you can take me up with it after this. But the key of the kingdom is knowing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God. He said, he said, Peter, flesh and blood can't reveal this to you, man. You get it straight from heaven. He said, and on this, yes, when you get to understand who I am, you have the key. That whatever you ask on earth, be assured that that thing is already done in heaven. And what you think you can lose here or bound here, I guarantee that it's already done in heaven. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's done in heaven already. It's already done. 
My God. Oh, glory to God. My God. It's done. So, with that, and he's now giving John, and this John is, is his disciple. You know, remember all, almost every time Jesus would take a few of his disciples aside, is Peter, James, and John. Yes. Peter, James, and John. Yeah.